Now, I said I wasn't going to talk about this on my channel, but this is my channel. And we are, what, two days away from the election? So, I just want to say that they are not like us. Kendrick Lamar made the song at the perfect time. They are not like us. Every single time I log on to any social media app, I am bombarded with political post after political post after political post and it's gotten so bad so I started just saying not interested not interested not interested and the posts are so crazy because you have people on both sides of these parties that's literally tearing down either the party or the person or the people that support the person you even have the president current president calling different supporters garbage it is all divisive it is a trick and I need you to not be fooled okay as a Christian we are called to love God first and love thy neighbor and if you think about it just think about it we get in upset with each other breaking bonds you know forming disdain for one another over people who stop traffic they don't sit in traffic like you and I you know they are going to have secret service around them. Like they're literally not like us. And the more that I watch this presidential race, it's, it's kind of just sad and like crazy. I can't see myself really standing 10 toes down for neither one of the candidates because answer this question for me. If you're at your job and your boss calls you in and says, have you accomplished the things you said you were going to do when we had the meeting on Monday and you tell them, I have a concept of a plan, that is not going to fly at your job. It's not. If you say, did you finish the proposal that I asked you to do? If, if your boss asks you, did you finish the proposal that you were supposed to do? And you say, there's a lot that needs to be done. And I'm focusing on what needs to be, and I'm pointing out what needs to be done. Like, it don't work. The stuff that they're saying both sides will not work at your job. And these people are supposed to work for us. But yet, and still, they get passes after passes. If you ask them a question, they're pointing the finger at the other person. If you are at your job and your boss says, did you finish the, the Pepsi project? I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. And you say, um, well, see, the problem is John over there didn't like it's just not going to work at your job. So how is it working for them at their job? Like you're supposed to be serving the people. But I hear nobody admitting anything. Nobody takes accountability and everyone is pointing the finger and making excuses or refuse to simply answer questions. And so I'm just listening to the candidates and then I'm listening to all of the chatter and the rhetoric online and I'm just like how are people so easily fooled by the distractions of this and I'm not saying that this is not an important election or anything like that I'm just saying if you go back and you look at a lot of different things in America probably shouldn't be saying these things but this is my truth this is my channel if you go back and look at certain things it just don't really make a lot of sense to you once you really start deep diving into it. And, and I'm a visual person. So I said, okay, I have been, I've started voting when Obama got in office and I was like, wait, so who all has ran? And I went back and I wrote all of this stuff out and it was absolutely eye-opening to me. I'm like, so basically we flip parties pretty much every one to two terms so did you expect anything different no no they get to get away with it each time they keep making each other look like the bad guy and then we flop to the, the the other party then we go back to the other party so do not let this election taint your heart okay don't do it and you know what else the economy is one of the biggest topics on the presidential campaign tickets, right? It's one of the big, one of the big concepts. And as I was doing the research, because like I said, I've been listening to videos, then I like research what they're saying and stuff like that. And 
you know, every month or sometimes every other month, the feds raise or lower rates. So I'm like, okay, that's like the economy person, right? You giving them the power to control the economy and make the, the decisions and whatnot. So I go back and I do the research and I'm like, okay, I know that Jerome Powell is the chair fed now. And so I'm like, okay, well, who voted for him? Turns out they're not voted for, they're appointed. And Trump appointed Jerome Powell in 2018. So that's the Republican side, right? But Jerome Powell is still the chair fed now. And guess who reappointed him? Biden in 2022. So certain things just don't be adding up to me. So I just keep my eye on the prize, the real prize. But nevertheless, we are Americans. This is a democracy. And so we must vote. We must vote our beliefs. And no matter what the outcome is, we must still be civil towards one another, love one another, and build America. I feel like a politician saying that. <laughs> no, but seriously. Um, and then also, I think it's very important, if I'm going to tell you to vote, don't just think about the presidential election. There are a lot of races. There are a lot of amendments. I know marijuana is one of the amendments down here in Florida. It's probably, it might be nationwide. I don't know. I have to look into that. But know what's on the ballot, okay? Because... Everybody's like, get out there and vote. Yes, vote. But also know who you're going to vote for and why. You have, to, you have to do a little bit of research. Um, and you can go online, pull up your ballot, and kind of like look at it beforehand. But yeah, vote and know your vote. And after this race, I cannot even lie. I'll be like, dang. I was used to all of the election content. Boy, you have videos every single day, a few times a day. It's, it's been intense. Not to mention all the songs that came out of this presidential election. So let me show you some of my skate moves to some of these songs. Kamala is at a dance party with Beyonce, 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 Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. 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 Party with Beyonce. 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 Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. Dance party with Beyonce. 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 Beyonce party with Beyonce. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cats. Eat the cats. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. Eat the cat. I'm here to do my black, black, black job. Those black jobs. One of those. Who's going to tell them that the job? All right. Now, I know I play too much, but I do want to. I do want to keep it on a serious note, like seriously, Christians, lovers of Jesus, lovers of Jesus. We have to stick together and keep our eye on the prize. One of the stories, it was actually two things that kind of gave me some clarity on how to make sure that I am protecting my heart when it comes to this politics stuff. There's a story in Matthews, I think it's Matthews 22, and the teachers of the law or the Pharisees were trying to trick, they were trying to trick Jesus, and they asked him uh, about taxes, and he said, you know, you tell the truth, should we pay taxes? And so Jesus was like, he was like, you hypocrites, like he knew that they were trying to trick him, so he asked them to show him a coin they show him the coin silver coin and jesus said whose picture is on the coin and they was like oh caesar jesus said give to caesar what is caesar give to god what is god's and they was finished and he was done with it and that to me summed up what needs to happen give the vote to the united states but don't give your heart to the United States, because at the end of the day, the United States, 
Europe, Africa, South America, all of these places will not be here one day. But the kingdom of heaven will. So give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God what is God's. And the other scripture that really made a lot of sense to me and I was reading it two days ago and that is the scripture that even prompted me to even want to do this video came out of Luke and I'm going to share it with you every kingdom that is divided and fights against itself will be destroyed and a family that fights against itself will break apart and that is Luke 11 verse 17 so that is the scripture that made me even want to make this video listen there's a lot of hype around how horrible life will be in america if certain people are elected really both sides have a story on how things will be so bad but really things will only be bad if you and I are bad so if I make sure I examine my heart daily and you make sure you examine your heart daily then we have a better outlook on life it doesn't really matter like who's in office it matters about who's in our heart okay and I'm going to sum up this other I'm going to share this other um, devotional that I read in my Jesus Bible that kind of summed it up. And I was like, you know what? I'm sharing this. Jesus proclaimed and explained the kingdom of God, God's rule over all things. In the Old Testament, God established his kingdom politically under David. When the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem, the prophets continued to speak of the re-establishment of the kingdom of God under the coming Messiah. When Jesus came to earth. He preached that the kingdom of God had arrived. With Jesus coming, God's redemptive rule has freed men and women from Satan's power. When Jesus cast out demons, he demonstrated the reality of the kingdom. And through his parables, Jesus described what the kingdom was like. What we know from Jesus' own account of the kingdom is that from an earthly perspective, it turns worldly values and priorities upside down. In God's kingdom, the poor are rich. Those who mourn will be comforted. The meek are powerful and seekers, mercy givers, peacemakers, and those who are persecuted are the ones who will inherit the kingdom. Jesus' ministry on earth ushered in the kingdom, the coming of the spirit, and brought it into the new phase. And someday, when the dead in Christ are raised and Jesus comes again to establish his earthly kingdom, it will be fully realized in all of its splendor, justice, and perfection. All right, so that is pretty much all I want to say about that. And if you want to know what my plans are for November, then listen to this next part. Happy November 1st. I am really stepping into my productivity, do what you say you're gonna do error, and I'm gonna encourage you to do the same if you're not, okay? Now we have 60 days into the new year and I implemented some things at the beginning of this year that I wish I would have done maybe around November or December of 2023, but I'm not gonna cry over spilled milk, it's done. But now that I have that system in place, I wanna teach it to you. Okay. And the reason I want to teach this to you is because I recognize the times that we're in, you know, everybody is feeling squeezed and it looks like there's not a lot of opportunity, but that's a lie. There is opportunity everywhere. Okay. And so one of the things that I've learned recently about opportunity and being ready and, and making provisions is that you have to get ready for what you want. You cannot get to where you want to be 
and then think that you're going to have all the skills to maintain or have all of the resources to do what it is that you desire to do. So what am I mean? What am I saying? What I mean is you have to have a plan for whatever the next month or the next quarter or the next year looks like. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. You know, a lot of people say God laughs at your plans. This is true, but there is, you know, we do have to make sure that we are financially responsible you know, good stewards over our finances. You have to be able to use what you have. And part of that is assessing what it is that you have and 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 seeing how you can multiply it. So I want to show you how to do that. And this series has been something that I wanted to do for a long time because I shared here on this channel two years back that I filed bankruptcy. I went into foreclosure at the same, same time. And my mindset is what allowed me to, you know, make my own income, be able to manage other people, learn how to change my mindset. Because what got me into that bankruptcy and foreclosure Part of it was my mindset. The other half was this government since they freaking had a housing crisis and decided to bail out the banks, but they didn't bail us out. But that's another story and let me not get on the soapbox. Anyway, I have been wanting to do this series for quite some time because I feel like we're in that same cycle that I was in before. Difference is this time around, I was smart. I didn't get into a lot of debt. I don't have a new car. You know, I don't put anything on credit. I don't have any student loan debts because when I do something, I ask myself this fundamental question, is it going to make me money? How much effort do I have to put in for it to make me money? So those are some of the things that, you know, I've learned and I want to like share it and break it down. Like the things that you should be doing from right now into the new year. So you can just kind of smoothly coast on in there and you set these systems up so that you can make sure that you're monitoring them accordingly. Because a lot of times when it comes to our financial lives or even our organization in our homes, we might set it up, but we don't necessarily maintain it. So that is a part of the planning. So I want to address all of that. So yeah, that is the series that I'll be starting. Let me know if you are interested, if you down 60 days, drop that in the comments. If you are down to start this reset, this 2025 reset, because I'm telling you, it's all about preparation and assessing the situation. Now, the other content that I'm going to keep going, you, you guys said you appreciated it, you liked it, is... Bible study. It won't be long. I will not be preaching. I just want to share some of the scriptures that are super powerful to me. And when I say powerful, I mean like they really transform your mindset because a lot of the problems that I had was related to my mindset. And once I changed that, those problems were fixed. So I'll be sharing that on a weekly basis. And then just getting this place together. I'm not going to run into, you know, the same situation that I did before trying to do everything too fast. I don't have any furniture yet, but I'm okay with that because I want to create the vision board and actually do the research on the pieces of furniture that I want. Plus, I don't know if you notice, but in interior design and just in, yeah, in the inside of the interior design world overall, a lot of people are gravitating towards vintage, thrifted, you know, second hand, that type of stuff. And I'm like, is this really a trend or or is everybody just feeling squeezed and we just going to make it a trend? But I'm noticing that everything that I watch, people have, you know, really started to celebrate a lot of second hand vintage items so i'm here for it it's cool you know it's gonna help me practice my yeah my thrifting skills 
So I definitely want to do a little bit of that. So in order to marry all that stuff, you kind of got to take your time. Not too much time, but I've been doing some sofa shopping. I'm kind of narrowing it down to which sofa I want. And then once I get my sofa, that truly determines like the the design and style that I'm going to go towards. So yes, that is the plan. That is what I am looking forward to. But again, don't be alarmed when I throw up a random keep you informed type of video because I didn't do that before. That's not good.